Hello everybody, it's your boy Mark here, and we're going to be playing more SC2VN. Now in the last episode, we were um, really struggling to find motivation to get back to the team and just really contemplating, you know, our StarCraft dream, really. And um, then we were visited by Jet and got a stern talking to and returned back after some very thoughtful and just important advice from Mr. Yeon from the Gomart, and now we're into practicing, found out Stunt's not really a good enough player strate strategy wise in order to help us out, and then we came to the, with a up with a big idea that, hey, what if we did 2v1? Stunt as a Protoss player, being able to use the stuff, and then Reva as kind of the brain of the like execution of plans. In order to get this last week's worth of preparation ready for when I go against Bolt. And now we're about to do that. So without any further ado, let's let's jump right into it. Jet replaces herself in Jay in Reva's vacated seat. Arms crossed and expression fierce. She's intent on seeing for herself whether or not this will work. When Stunt is done joking about doing a fusion dance with Reva, we load up a game with Reva and Stunt on the same team and a setting enabled to keep Reva's base from spawning. So I don't have to worry about anything else except destroying Mach? This is going to be great. Hey Reva, build two gateways by this base for me. No, we are playing standard. Come on, okay, how about a proxy stargate then? No. I can hear you, you know. It will not matter, such is the beauty of standard play. <clears throat> I soon find that her confidence is well placed. Even with Reva's economy focused build order, Stunt Stalker her harass makes my life difficult. He dances the single unit back and forth at the entrance of my natural, all of his focus devoted to its control. It's a painfully effective frustration that succeeds in slowing down my attempts at establishing economy in tech. My multitasking and micro are brought to their limits, and we haven't even hit five minute mark. This is insane. And very, very good practice. <laughs> I don't have the chance to spare a glance over my shoulder at a seller gen, but I'd make a pretty sure bet that they're just as intent on the game as Stunt, Reva, and I are. The match drags on on up until Stunt and Reva Archon rolls over my paltry force with a well-timed and perfectly controlled two bases push. It wasn't even close. Well, they make for a tough opponent, that's for sure. You three down to keep at this? Are you kidding? This is amazing. I'm enjoying myself as well. The point isn't to have fun, it's to practice. Run a Nexus first. I want to see how Mach handles it. Okay. Decision time. It's incredible. Playing an opponent at this level allows me to see the game in an all new way. Sun's control is precise and crashes against my defense like a wave, while Reva directs the flow of battle like a symphony's conductor. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> <laughs> they have achieved purity of form, though these repeated though these repeated losses, I can see just how outmatched I am nearly in every aspect of StarCraft. The moments of weakness for an opponent that plays such a clean style are scant and short-lived, but they exist. I can create them by taking risks, using mind games, and forcing mistakes. I felt these things on instinct before but I can now see them for the truths they are. The element of human error is practically zero between Stunt and Reva. A Starcraft is a game of imperfect information. Anyone, even a perfect machine, is capable of being defeated. I'm done being afraid of you, Bolt. It's late in the evening when a cell calls our practice quits. 12 hours straight, minus breaks for lunch and dinner. Four more days of that, and he'll be as ready as he possibly can in that in that amount of time. We risk Sun and Rava falling out of practice, but there really isn't any other choice. At least it won't be for, for us. At least it won't for be for long. Jet still hasn't acknowledged me with direct eye contact, but the animosity 
animosity I keep I felt coming from her this morning is all but gone. Neither Sun or Riva seem even a fraction as out of it as I am. Yet, as tired as I am, I find myself eager for practice tomorrow. I can only hope that it lasts until the end of the week. I've got a few more things to take care of before the weekend. The VSL studio has managed to fit us in a time slot right before the semifinals for our team league. I've seen some of the promotion they're doing online. It's being hyped as KPGA versus Foreigner match. Mox has been, been cast as the villain, a last minute way of hyping up the match since it was on such short notice. The Korean Pro Gamer Association would not have allowed one of their players to compete otherwise. It seems they're beginning to sow the seeds for the for the transition from Brood War to StarCraft 2. It's hard to imagine that the talent pool for StarCraft 2 could get any more deep. Bolt is the only one of a few dozen top tier players being held back by floodgates of KPGA's regulations. A win against Bolt ought to show KPGA players and their fanboys not to shrug us off as those who switched to StarCraft 2 early. No need for so much bite, Jet. We switched because we were ready for a new challenge, right? She glances away, failing to match Asel's now wavering grin. I need to go. The rest of you, get some rest. Yo, Reva, wanna grab some dinner? We can practice our fusion dance for tomorrow. A Potara earring is necessary for fusion because two distinct beings stunt. No, oh, is necessary for fusion between two distinct beings stunt and the hyperbolic time chamber is more apt metaphor for mox training regimens reg regardless oh jesus <laughs> a bickering sun ray of an exit shortly behind the stone-eyed jet leaving only me and a cell for the half empty cafe don't bother worrying about yesterday jet told you huh even if she didn't, it'd be an easy guess. You weren't giving it your all when we called it quits the day before. Figures. A sigh escapes me, leading us out to drop a hand onto my shoulder. Just focus on the show match. If you want to worry about sleeping in after winning, you can mope around the team house for a day. Despite my efforts, I can't keep, my, keep myself from spinning out a laugh. <laughs> Things have changed so much since I have met you and Jet. For the better, I hope? Yeah, you guys are so goal-driven. It's kind of mind-blowing, actually. Best way to live, if you ask me, and good practice for the real challenge. Don't think Jet will be satisfied with a little bit of money from Enoch. You won't have time to pick the confetti out of your hair before hearing all about next season's plan. If she ever finds a reason to talk to me again, if she ever finds a reason to talk to me again, that is. Jet has her way of dealing with things. Don't sweat it too much, and just focus on your practice. Right, I will. I rise from my chair at least, checking my pockets on the way up from my key and wallet. Take care. I'm going to stick around and ladder for a while. Coach has to keep his skills current, you know. Will you join the team as a player when your contract with Crash w is up and at the end of the year? Is up at the end of the year? Who knows? Let's just worry about the next few days, yeah? Fair enough. Later, Asel. He falls right back into his chair after a fist bump, leaving me to stock the neon lit screens alone. <sighs> the city lights have never been so beautiful. I have no desire to leave Soul's electric embrace now that things are finally starting to make sense. What if I hadn't run into Asel at like Golden Zone Fire? I'd probably be booking my ticket for a flight home at the end of the month right about now. And without Jet, there'd be no team, no goal, past the vague dream to qualify for VSL. If not for Sun or Reva, I'd have no starring partners, no teammates, not to mention, no way to have earned Jet's confidence in front of Mr. Kim. Mr. Kim, no matter how much he rubs me the wrong way, he's as much part of my chance to stay here as my teammates. And Mr. Yeon, 
Who'd have thought that the convenience store clerk I'd been avoiding eye contact with would be the one bringing me back from the brink? By whatever means necessary, I'll repay those that have helped me stand where I am now to now, where I where I do now. Wait. I love when my brain's like, hey, we're going to make this in our own sentence. And I'm like, no, we got to read. For the third time, if you don't scout the second gas, build a damn bunker. Don't be so greedy. Make sure you stay clear of the path, clear of his vision if you're going to take that kind of drop path. They'll try to roll over you with Colossus if they manage to pick off your dropships. Prioritize your Viking production first. Yes, just like that. With a couple of snipes on the stunt and rave combinations High Templar, the Protoss army is left uh, bereft any kind of area effect damage, allowing me to charge forward and go for the jugular. Even with stunts top tier control and Rava's highly efficient production, I managed to push my way into their base and secure not one, but two GGs. I leap out of my seat in triumphant victory. Out of uh, almost a hundred games, that's the third win I have managed to clinch. It feels amazing. I wasn't sure that I'd be able to manage a breakthrough as a result of this kind of practice, but my control has noticeably improved. A good thing, considering the match with Bold is tomorrow. Gah! She insisted on building more High Templar when I asked for a Colossus. It was, strate it was strategically unsound to push onto the map. You should have... You should have allowed our upgrades to complete and used the High Templar as a drop defense. What do you know? You don't even play Protoss! Reva places her index finger on Sun's forehead, easily keeping him at arm's length. The pair quiets their harmless squabbling when Jet rises. That's enough for today. Uh, but it's barely 6 o'clock. The day before an important match is the most important. Not in terms of practice, but to prepare mentally. Jet says to no one in particular, making it a point to ignore me when I turn to look at her. A new age method, huh? Better than the all-in cram, all-night cram sessions from Brood War days, I suppose. It's scientifically proven to work. Besides, it's not like I'm giving him the rest of the day to do as he pleases. Damn, with Jet, even relaxation is ordained. Come on, we're going to Namdan. Again with Namdan? Pro gamers don't belong in a place without computers. Would you rather spend the rest of the day cleaning ashtrays at your mom's? You know what? You're all just jealous that you don't have a PC bang in the family. The rest of us share a laugh on the way out with stunt trailing after us begrudgingly. <laughs> That's funny. Given the mood coming out of the cafe, I'm surprised to find that none of us have all that much to say after we loiter around a park bench. Stunt's attention never strays from the game on his phone, while Reva and Acel simply stare off into space. Jet paces back and forth, though her gait lacks an usual purpose. Between all five of us, silence. Maybe not all that much needs to be said. All we know, we all know the stakes. Everyone's done their part to prepare for tomorrow. It's natural for us to feel nervous. The key is to keep it from affecting our chance of winning. It is sad. I shift my gaze towards Reva, surprised to find her staring at the ground. What is it? What is? That this may be the last evening we gather as a team. Eh, uh, come on, Reva. Don't say stuff like that. It won't do us any good. But it is the truth. Mock, please win tomorrow. I do not want to stop spending time with all of you. I have been a happier person since I joined the team. I would have strongly preferred to stay that way. Guarded as she is, Reva intones the sadness that the rest of us are trying to deny. Even Jet seizes her merch march to observe the exchange i feel the same way reva if i i'll win tomorrow i promise the penalty for lying is death reva breathes out a sigh and collects herself 
I believe that he will. Me too. Mock probably plays an important part of my story to become the greatest player of all time. The first chapter can't end with a loss. It just wouldn't make sense. An arm slings itself around my shoulder. With a glance, I find that it belongs to a cell. Feeling alright? Not as bad as before, but the pressure is still there. As your coach, I am obligated to encourage you to win, but what's most important is what you want. For what it's worth, I'm with Reva. I'd be sad to see you leave Korea. I've got more than enough motivation for tomorrow. Is that what, you, what we're here for? It isn't just for you. For the first time, since she barged into my room, Jet addresses me directly. Her expression is devoid of the intensity that I've come to know her for. I wasn't lying when I said that you had the potential to be great. True as that is, it doesn't make you special. Everyone has the compatibility to be a champion. It isn't genetic or unique. I'm not denying the existence of talent, but it's not nearly as essential as people who make it out to be. Starcraft. And everything else. It's way more than that. Most people are either unwilling or unable to work hard. Simply being able to overcome the barriers that make it makes it possible to do things that other people sit around and daydream about. If you've done that, you can lose without regrets. Have you? Yeah, I have. Good. Then that's all that's left is to trust it'll earn us the win. Silence follows Jet's final remarks, leaving us with an air of gravitas. It's only a quip from stunt that saves the rest of us from our glum-faced stare-down. Deep. <laughs> Don't be a prick, stunt. Alright, let's go over the game plan for tomorrow. How you play is up to you, but it's probably smart to stick to what you've been practicing. Yeah, I know better than to invent a build on the fly. How about you open us up, Jet? Still against the build raver prepared us for the game prepared for game one? <clears throat> I understand the idea, I just don't think it's a sure win. But we'll probably assume Mach is looking to steal win, so he'll be on the lookout for something non standard. It was devised with that in mind. If executed as planned, it should secure a lead, not a victory. If not a victory. Don't give Bolt any disrespect that he hasn't earned. If you let him set the pace for the series, it'll be an uphill battle. I agree with that, actually. Alright, fine. It's just not my style of play. Moving on. How about mid-game? Um, I was playing my usual style. Drop ships and establish map control and slow down his third base. If I scout that he's being too greedy, greedy I go for the kill. That's solid. I wouldn't change anything there. Seconded. It's annoying playing against those kinds of Terrans if I can't kill them early. Reva fidgets with her glasses, evidently disagreeing. Do not write off the possibility of mech. He's barely practiced mech. Why would you even suggest that? It is the ideal unit composition when played at its apex. If only he can get there safely, which would be imp which will be practically impossible against a Protoss as lethal as both. Bolt. Hey. Riva concedes her suggestion with a shrug. Last thing, late game. If Bolt manages to get you on three bases, don't try to end the game with a direct fight unless you have tons of defenses prepared to slow down his march. The fully powered Protoss army is stronger than a maxed out Terran so you have to look elsewhere to find an edge. The opposite is true in Brood War, so he's used to being the aggressor. If you see Bolt eager to engage with you, don't automatically assume that it's because he'll roll you. That reminds me, are there any other kind of mistakes that Brood War players make when they first switch to StarCraft 2? You and a cell should know better than anyone. Hmm, it's the little things, honestly. Knowledge that you take for granted that Bolt has to work for. 
You can look at five marauders and know they'll crush seven stalkers without actively thinking about it. For example, he can't. He probably can't yet. Oh, without thinking about it, for example. He probably can't yet. That and his strategies. Bolt hasn't been playing Star 2 for as long as you. He's probably up to date on standard builds from the current meta. He'll be relying on game sense and mechanics to carry him through that shortcoming. If you can get a read on him, he won't be able to fall. He won't be able to fall back onto an older style. As strong as a brood war player as he is, Bolt isn't immune for to slip ups, especially in a new game. If he expands too fast or spreads his army too thin, crush him. Yeah, got it. Then I guess we've done everything we can. Nothing to do but play. <laughs> You'll want to run through some warm-ups and get a glimpse of the crowd early to keep your nerves down, so don't be late. When I answer with a nod, Asel smiles. Final glimpse of the four faces of my teammates underscores the need to win tomorrow. Nothing else needs to be said. Everyone has placed not only their trust, but also their future is in me. Okay, so I hope you all enjoyed that episode. I found it very fun, and yeah, it's kind of somber, sad, and uh, pressure's on to win, but I think that's necessary for this situation. So other than that, I hope you all enjoyed the video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that notification to know when I upload and take care of yourselves. It's important, especially when you need to work towards big things, you know, in real life, you know, things that aren't video games or other stuff like that. Video games can be a big thing, but I like to try to take little lessons from everything I enjoy. So other than that, I hope you have a great time, morning, noon, night, whatever time is for you. And I'll see you on the next video. Toodles.